Coming up on the Thursday edition of LSU Sports Showtime, did the Lady Tiger basketball team make it past Louisville to their seventh Sweet 16 in a row? And we'll tell you if the baseball team schooled Harvard in their two-game midweek series. Plus, the women's tennis team took on Oregon last night, looking to give Coach Tony Minutes his 250th career win. All that in your weekend preview. Sports Showtime starts now. Welcome to Sports Showtime, your source for everything LSU Athletics. I'm Brian Tompkins. And I'm Mary Claire Palmer. A rainy day couldn't stop games from taking place around campus last night, but first, the Lady Tigers basketball team in the NCAA tournament. Last Saturday, the LSU men's basketball team was bounced in the second round of the NCAA tournament. The Lady Tigers were looking to avoid a similar fate when they hosted Louisville on Tuesday night. The Tigers started out hot and held the lead 42-21 with eight minutes to go, but succumbed to third-seeded Louisville 62-52. Allison Hightower once again shined for the Tigers, dropping 21 points in the losing effort. But the story of the game, the All-American duo of Angel McCautry and Candace Bingham for Louisville. The duo combined for 45 points on the night. Despite the loss, the Tigers return all but one starter from this year's squad. And after the game, Lysandra Barrett commented on the team's bright future. It's a learning experience. In each game, you learn something new. In each season, you should learn something new. So this should just be our motivation to start anew and start in the offseason, preparing and getting stronger. And we know how we finish this season and how young we are. That, I mean, nothing is impossible. This is the first time in the past six years the Tigers have failed to advance to the Final Four. On Tuesday night, the LSU baseball team barely eked out a victory against hapless Harvard 4-3. Harvard is a school known a lot more for their academic excellence and less for their baseball dominance. The Tigers tried to sweep away the Crimson on Wednesday night. It was a beautiful night and the new Alex Box Stadium before the rain started. Freshman pitcher Chris Matulis took the mound and showed him getting one of his five strikeouts of the night. That's pretty much all the highlights you will see from any other Tiger as freshman Mikey Matuk was the star of the night for the Tigers as he racked up four RBIs and shown one of his two home runs of the night. Now these are his two first career home runs for the Tigers. Matuk was one of four Tigers placed into the lineup as head coach Paul Maneri saw a lack of effort in the Tigers win Tuesday night. Here you'll see Matuk getting the ceremonial pie in the face as a baseball right of, of, right of passage for newcomers having good games. Thanks to Matuk's offensive barrage, the Tigers would be no match for Harvard as they took the game 10-2. Matuk's two home runs were the first of his career. After that pie in the face, Matuk told Sports, told sports Showtimes how those two home runs and that pie felt. It felt good, you know, I've never uh, hit two home runs in a game, so... Was it, it worth the in the face? Well, yeah, every bit of it. Every bit of it? Every bit of it. I'll take another one if I had to. The new Alec Box Stadium suffered damage from last night's ravenous storm. However, the damage is expected to be fixed quickly, and it's not expected to affect the team's upcoming series with Ole Miss. Tiger Park and the, new, and the indoor football practice facility and the LSU soccer complex also sustained significant damage in the storm. While the victories inside the new Alec Box seem to be making fans very happy, but Sports Showtime's Eric Vollenwater found out some fans have actually been unhappy about the little changes made off the field in the Tigers' brand new stadium. With all new suites, high definition scoreboard, and top of the line amenities, you might say that the new Alec Box is one of the best places to catch a baseball game in the entire country. It's, it's a gorgeous stadium. It's beautiful. While four-year season ticket holder Jack Summerall enjoys the state-of-the-art stadium, he and other fans have found flaws in the new stadium's design. The biggest challenge we have is that to see the scoreboard, you have to stand up, look up about 190 degrees, and you're looking almost at the, directly at the sky. 
In an off-camera interview, Associate Athletic Director Eddie Nunes explained that unlike in the old box, the scoreboard could not be placed in right field due to that area's foundation and because the scoreboard in right may hinder future development. Another grievance LSU fans has expressed to me is the absence of the intimidator beyond the right field wall. One LSU fan's theory, they didn't bring it over because the team has yet to earn it. However, not all complaints resided beyond the outfield fences. Donnie Lacombe has been coming to games since the 70s and says security in the new stadium is tighter than it ever was at the old park. The stadium now has a bag check line that searches patrons for outside food and other banned items. They're just not as fan friendly. I mean, it used to be you could bring a cup, a covered cup into the stadium, but now you can't bring anything in the stadium, not even a bottle of water. From the new Alec Box Stadium, I'm Eric Vollenweider. Reporting for Sports Showtime. Nunez does not rule out a new intimidator being a part of future development. The Lady Tigers softball team displayed Jekyll and Hyde performances Tuesday night when they took on the Ole Miss Rebels in a doubleheader. In game one, the Rebels needed 10 innings to defeat the Lady Tigers. A two out single in the 10th by Alyssa McGovern gave Ole Miss the 3 2 victory. LSU scored its two runs in the fifth inning by way of Ashley Langoni's fifth homer of the season. The following game favored the Lady Tigers as they prevailed by, prevailed by a score of 5-2. Freshman pitcher Brittany Mack pitched a complete game, striking out four batters and walking only one for a tenth win of the season. Anissa Young swung the hot bat for LSU, going 2-4 for four at the plate with three RBIs. After a two-hour rain delay, the LSU women's tennis team took on Oregon State last night in Dub Robinson Stadium. Even without veteran Me Megan Falcon, the Lady Tigers went on a tear against the Ducks in singles. LSU won five out of the six matches. Both coaches agreed to not play the doubles point. The Lady Tigers would easily take the match from the Ducks 5-1. to one. LSU went 5-1 to one in singles. The Lady Tigers will welcome second-ranked Georgia to the dub on Friday at 3. After the game, we caught up with Coach Tony Minnis on how he feels getting his 250th career win. Had two kids step in that haven't really been playing much and, and did a tremendous job against a good Oregon team. But, you know, I'm really excited to, to get that win. And I think, it, you know, we've had a lot of great players over the years that have contributed to it. So uh, it, it's, it's nice. And, you know, hopefully we can maybe get 251 on Friday. LSU spring practice is in full swing as the Tigers look for redemption after last season's disappointments. When you go to describe the players on the field for the Tigers, the first thing that comes to mind are big, strong, and athletic. But, but what about evangelical? Erica McManus gives us a glimpse into the not-so-typical life of one LSU football player. When Drake Nevis thinks football, he thinks... Intense, hard, and challenging. Standing over six feet tall and weighing almost 300 pounds, Nevis seems to be your typical defensive lineman on the football team. Dominant. That's just the one word that, that he always plays with on the field, just a dominant attitude. Mr. and Mrs. Nevis say their son's dedication to football began at a young age. What's the word? Focus. Over the years I've, I've seen, um, I've noticed he's become more aggressive more assertive on the field. Now on Saturday nights, this is where you will normally see Drake. But on Monday nights, you'll find the defensive lineman in a different setting. Here, once a week, Drake holds an athlete's Bible study in his apartment. 30 to 40 LSU athletes attend. Here, they fellowship, eat pizza, and study scripture. On nights like tonight, you will see Drake in a different light. Josh LaRavia leads the Bible study and says he and Drake started the study about a year ago with only two people. So I met Drake a year and a half ago at FCA and we just started hanging out and started getting in the Word together and encouraging one another and Drake was like, hey, we should start a study. Drake says he's more than just a football player. After verbally committing to Ole Miss, he said God called him to sign at LSU. Stir people, Christians in the, in the right directions and help build. Uh, Christian teams help people stand on what they believe in. Drake Nevis, a warrior on and off the field. For Tiger TV, I'm Erica McManus. Along with leading a Bible study, Drake also sends out encouraging texts to a list of almost 300 people several times a week.